Are you looking for a podcast about that premium platinum plan? Then you must be thinking of another podcast. Oh. Good evening, Kelsey. Good evening, Robert. How are you? I'm fantastic and fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm ready to get into some Kelsey stuff. Oh, because what? <laughs> I know Thanksgiving is over. I believe it's time for Kelsey Christmas time. It's time for my birthday month. I have a question about Christmas for you. Okay. Because uh, Taylor showed me a TikTok and I was like, that's a good question. And some of these people are wrong. Okay. This TikTok is a lady and she goes, me and my husband had a fight. Tell me who's right. She goes, I'm right, but let's see what you think. Okay. So she was trying to watch a movie and she goes, ooh, let's watch uh, a Christmas movie. Let's watch Home Alone. All right. And her husband goes, what? Home Alone is not a Christmas movie. Wrong. And she goes, what does that mean? And he goes, that's just a movie with Christmas happening. Okay. <laughs> like, it's not a Christmas movie. People get so pedantic with Christmas movies. Yeah, so I voted for her. She's 100% correct. Yes. So, to me, not, not even to me, to Kelsey, tell me what makes a Christmas movie. I think that as long as the movie is taking place on or around the holiday and makes mention of it, then it's a movie for that holiday. Boom. Yes, 100%. Like, if it was just, if it was on Christmas, but they never said anything about it even, and never showed Christmas decorations, if it's never made a point to be like, oh, tomorrow's Christmas, then maybe it's not a Christmas movie. I don't know. Yeah. But, like, I think that there's so many movies that people want to argue that are not Christmas movies. You know that I am a Die Hard fan of Die Hard. Yep. <laughs> and the fact that it is a Christmas movie and First of all, it takes place on Christmas Eve. At a Christmas party. <laughs> How is that not a Christmas movie? I don't know. And people keep wanting to be like, oh, it's an action movie. Action movies can't be Christmas movies. Who yeah, said? it's an action Christmas movie. <laughs> Who made that rule that you can't have an action movie that is also a Christmas movie? Is a Christmas movie in the eyes of the public just a Hallmark film where like, the woman gets the man and everyone's happy and they all have a good time at presents and like, togetherness and fire and warmth. Does does Santa have to be in it to be warranted a Christmas movie? You know? Yeah, like what? what like what's is, the deal? What's the checklist that people are doing these backflips yeah. for? Because hands down, I will tell you now, the original Spider-Man movie, 2002, Tobey Maguire. Uh-huh. Uh, that's a Thanksgiving movie. Okay. <laughs> Thanksgiving happens. They have Thanksgiving dinner in that movie. They there you go. They have a turkey sitting there. They made their 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 sweet potatoes and shit. While the scene is fifteen minutes, ten minutes maybe. Yeah, doesn't doesn't matter. That is a Thanksgiving movie. Okay, takes place on Thanksgiving in a scene. Yeah, there you go. Thanksgiving movie. I don't I don't understand why people need to have this like technicality shit with everything you know people just want to be complex and pedantic that's all it is like it's just it's just a fun movie let I don't us know. have these holiday movies people quit being so counterculture yeah so i just wanted to see what you thought about that and you and me same page like let's uh toast to good. that please oh Ooh. they almost that sounded the exact good. same this time it's quite nice Somebody was like, it's because it needs to be based around this certain feeling. Get over it. I don't care. Yeah. Come on. It's just a movie. <sighs> I don't know how you can say there's a movie that takes place on the holiday and it's I know. not that holiday's movie. I'm trying to think of an example that is specifically counter to that. Like, is there a movie that features a holiday prominently that is not about, that is not considered a movie for that holiday, you know? I don't think so. Because, like, Nightmare Before Christmas is both a Halloween movie and a Christmas movie. Yep. I watch it for both. Because it's for both. It's for both. You know? Yeah. I mean, they mention other holidays in it, but it's not, like, about those holidays, right? Like, I think they have a brief Valentine's thing. Because they go into, like, the other tree worlds, I right? I mean, okay. No. So, so you see all the doors. 
Okay. But they never go to those doors. Okay. You know? So, I mean, that's a case of, like, it's happening around it, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, the Thanksgiving door was there. He never really looked at it or went to it, right? Because who would? But in Spider-Man, they legit go, it's Thanksgiving. We're making a good impression for Harry's father, you know? Like, okay. <laughs> it's about that Thanksgiving moment and being together. Yeah. It's a Thanksgiving moment. Whatever floats your boat. I'm not into saying you're right or wrong. I am. I feel like you're denying yourself a pleasure. Yeah. Why? You know. Why do you have to be mean to yourself? Why Why can't you just live life? Why can't you just enjoy things? Live it you, to you the always, fullest. You always watch die Christmas hard. Christmas like this. Why can't you just. <laughs> just enjoy Die Hard on Christmas. Okay. And that's the thing. You get two Die Hards for Christmas. Yeah. I hate. I hate that part two is literally just like the next Christmas Eve. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I find that ridiculous, but I'm like, hey, two Christmas movies. There you go. There you go. What a shitty Christmas life he has, man. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad we're on the same page. Yeah, of course. I would like to preface this whole next segment to you guys didn't bully me. <laughs> <laughs> I did all this on my own. Okay. okay. I have watched... So much TV, like TV shows in the past week since we recorded last. Okay. What have you been watching? Um, so at Thanksgiving, I found out the last half of the He-Man show came out. Hell yeah. So I was like, oh, well, I want to see how that ends, right? Yeah. I said it before when I talked about the first half. I've never seen He-Man before. Why is it stirring such emotions in me? It you're was having, good. You're having feelings, big feelings. When I got to the end of it, I did walk away with one thing that I think you will agree with. There is nothing quite like 80s action. Oh, man. The end of that show had this battle that was so 80s, and the only word that I can tie with it to was rad. It was yes. a rad moment. I was uh, like, "That's wonderful." This is the peak of what America has to offer the world is '80s action. <laughs> that's like that's like where we peaked in our contribution to the world. Yeah, pretty much. '80s action, so... <laughs> perfect. People were so inspired by, I don't know, the Cold War, <laughs> the lack I of action. Guess. They were like, "We got to put some action into it." Dude, it, He Man jumps on his battle cat, right? Okay, Battle Cat, love that. Yeah, he, like, slices this dude. Okay, so it it went, like, Netflix has this animation style they do for their quote-unquote anime series that they do. Okay. I wouldn't consider He-Man an anime, but they there's this art style that they use for, like, their specific animated shows. Okay. Because the Castlevania one is, like, the same look. Yeah. Right? And they'll do these moments of, like, it'll kind of go like a black and white charcoal sketch in, like, the heat of, like, an action moment. And the frame rate is really low. So you just see, like, the big, bold moments happen. Yeah, yeah. I love right? that. It's, it's really cool. Well, they do a moment where he slices a dude and it does that charcoal moment. And it's he, like, slices the H for He-Man into the guy, which slices the screen. Then he lands screams with his sword in the air while an explosion happens behind him. Okay. <laughs> and I was just like, that's rad, dude. Nothing nothing is cool like this kind of stuff was cool. Fucking robots, lasers, explosions. The 80s action is perfect. Nice. And I don't think any of our people really dig He-Man in such a way. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and spoil this. So, spoiler for He-Man, in case you really care. You know, the whole point is he, you know, gets the sword and I have the power and he gets big and strong, right? Right. Literally everybody in the fucking end of the show gets the power. Oh, whoa. There are so many big buff He-Men and women. <laughs> okay. Um, I set off Taylor's by panic big time. Okay. Oh, God. I can't remember her name. Who's, um... Who's the queen lady in Game of Thrones? Cersei? That people, like, hated. Yeah. Love her. What's her name? Cersei. But, like, her real name. 
but oh, it is her Cersei. like human name. Um, yeah, her human name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Lena Headey. Yes. Do you do you do you like adore her? I do. I think she is beautiful and wonderful, and I love her okay. hair. She plays uh, somebody named Evil Lynn in <laughs> He Man. Okay. Right? Was she Evil Lynn always? Like, is that her born name? They just knew she was going to be bad? No, like, you really get her backstory in one of the shows. She was, like, orphaned by her parents. Aw. And Skeletor just, like, came into contact with her and was like, be my lady. Okay. So she's just always been an outcast in life, having to steal to survive, and then she got with him. So she's just always been kind of bad. Okay. Um, Evelyn, I want to, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I need you to see. When she gets, she gets the, the power at one point. I just need you to see her, man. As, okay. As soon as I saw it, like the moment happens, I legit went, Taylor would find that highly engaging to her eyes. Highly engaging. Oh my god, the abs. Holy shit. Woo! She's got fucking just toned thighs and legs. She's barefoot. Oh my god. And just that haircut? Yeah, that haircut is like, I'm about that. No, dude. Sh- I saw that and was like, oh shit. She's, she is gonna, she's gonna change a lot of women. <laughs> That's a beautiful woman right there. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty cool. I really think if anybody is even remotely intrigued this show was really good i think kevin smith knocked it out of the park i oh, thoroughly goodness. enjoyed this it's 10 episodes of 20 minutes a piece it's not a big thing it's good i loved it i'm greatly. about this cape that she's wearing is it like beautifully animated because it looks beautifully animated so like the galaxy in her cape is like a still image, but yes. like whenever her cape moves, it just like cuts into that. I you know? love that. I, that's my favorite thing in yeah. animation when they do that shit. Like I saw that and was like, I think I could get Kelsey to watch this part. Yeah. I, this, this might have made me a He-Man fan right here. <laughs> um, I would need you to watch the whole show because she's kind of at the heart of the show. Okay. And she's, she's like the villain. Usually villains, you know, are not front and center in character progression. Yeah. She probably goes through the biggest change out of anybody throughout the whole show. Okay. Like, she has a character develop. Everybody's character in this show fully develops and changes. Nice. And I know you like character development shit. You know I love that character development. Everything paid off. I was just like, this was, this was good. And it ends with a cliffhanger that I don't understand. But there you go. Okay. Um, so then I had watched that and me and Taylor were looking for something else and we were just kind of like, do you want to watch this? Like, do you really? And we were like, all right, let's, let's start watching this. So we watched Centaur World. Okay. (laughs) Burden threw out a tweet, right? Had brought it up before. Yes. I had seen it on Netflix before then. Everybody should watch that show. Is it that good? It is not what you think it is. Because it just looks so, so bizarre. But, oh, it's very bizarre. It's built on bizarre. Okay. But here's, here's the best that I can equate it to. So you didn't finish it, so I don't know how much you're going to be into it. I think I can sell Ferdin with this. Okay. I mean, it's very akin to Adventure Time. It looks a lot like Adventure Time. Like, it's, I would say, a bit more bizarre than Adventure Time. Okay. But it's not what you think because it it's a musical. Like it's oh. a legit Broadway musical. What? Not like it was ever on Broadway. But like it's got songs, reprises of those songs in later episodes. Each one has at least three songs in it. Shit, it is okay. like it is like a sweeping Broadway musical of a show. How long are these shows? 20 minutes. Okay. And there's like 10 of them? Yeah. So there's 10 of these. We know what your favorite episode is already. (laughs) Like, I know which one's your favorite episode. 
All right. And and I know who your favorite character is if you ever gave it a chance. Okay, so you've already like you've laid out my future for me. Uh oh, I know. Trust me. As <laughs> soon as we saw it, we both were like Kelsey. <laughs> like I don't, like we I don't know. know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. And I don't want to give it away too much, but I just watched the trailer for season one. Okay. Because we watched the trailer for season two, and I was like, how much was given away in the trailer for season one? And since this guy's in it, I can give this away. You know what won it over for me, of course, was it's like, ah, it's cutesy, it's fun, it's all the stuff, right? Uh-huh. But then right there at the end, they pushed it over the edge, and it wasn't a kid's show anymore. And it oh. got, like, real dark. Oh, shit, okay. Like, Bojack Horseman dark, or? No, because that's, like, extensionalism of being an adult and being sad with life. This turned into, like, oh, there's a villain we didn't know about. Oh, okay. Oh, and this thing is legit pure evil, and it's horrific. Oh. It's a bad thing, and it just, like, wants to murder and hurt stuff. (laughs) Okay. And they, like, tease it very slowly throughout the show. But at one point, there is... There's actually one episode that I guess would go BoJack style. Mild spoiler, there is a straight up suicide episode. Oh no. It's very much like, let's give up on the journey and just die. Great. And when that happens, the stuff you see around it, I was like, that's a really fucked up thing that is going on here. Like, I didn't catch it the first time. I was, I'd like thought about it. I was like, I got to watch this one scene again. And it hit different. And I was like, okay. I mean, all this is right around just past the halfway point. That's when it starts to go, ha, this isn't all cute and fun. It starts to like lay down like, no, we're going to get for real later. Okay. This is what shows do these days. They like put down roots. Like we're fine. We're a good time. And then they're like, actually, we're going to gut punch you now. Oh, because the amount of times I cried in Adventure Time, dude. Adventure Time makes me weep. It is so oh moving in some of the things that it does, like, way later, you know? Yeah. Steven did the same shit. Yeah, it really did. Centaur World is just a, it's just a fun show. If you like musicals, you're going to dig all this music. Okay. Like, 100%. I don't know. I just thought it was a good show. I, I literally couldn't stop. I watched it in one sitting. Yeah, okay. That's, uh, that's intense. There's been very few shows that, like, I can't quit. It's usually animated shows. Like, I did that with Big Mouth, season one. God. I cranked out that whole season. Like, as soon as the episode when the little girl gets gets a period for the first time happened, I was like, oh, I got to finish this show. See, this is why I, <laughs> I have trouble trusting your recommendations. I don't know. I still have reservations about Big Mouth. Just You just whole... think it looks gross, though. I do, and I think the, I don't know, I'm I'm anti-Big Mouth, but I don't know why. Because it looks disgusting, and it does. There are gross moments in that show. Yeah. Like, like, I fully don't blame you for that, because there's a part in the opening credits that grosses me out. Okay. (laughs) Which is why I skip the credits all the time. Jesus. It's, It's when the guy, one of the kids lifts up his arm, and then, like, it shows his, like, armpit hair growing in. And then it, like, zooms into it, and that grosses me out for some reason. Okay. The metaphors and the representations of certain feelings in Big Mouth is why I like it so much. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, Depression Kitty. The idea of, like, this giant cat that sits on your chest and weighs you down. I was like, that's a good depiction of what that feels like. Yeah. Like, it's, it's the way they show these emotions and things that you can't see that I like about it so much. Okay. That's what I dig about Big Mouth. I just think that stuff's really cool and smart. Like, there's a there's a shame demon that makes you feel bad about stuff. The anxiety mosquito, I thought, was <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. I thought that was fantastic. But there's definitely gross shit in that show. Centaur World, no gross. Okay. This, this, just... one's, this one's Kelsey approved. Okay. <laughs> I would say. I think, I think you could like this show. And... Uh, Ferdin is in the show twice. Okay. Ferdin, I'm straight up calling you out on this one. Oh, no. Ferdin is in the show twice. First of all, Ted Mosby is in this show. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> which I did not know. He plays a giraffe named Durpleton. That's 
that's the worst name. It's the most disgusting name I've ever heard. <laughs> and since I learned it, I can't stop saying it. Derpleton. Derpleton. Isn't it? Ugh. It's like it's like the word moist. I can taste it. <laughs> you Derpleton. Can taste the Derpleton. <laughs> He's not even that interesting of a character. It's just his name is that that good. And the fact that, like, now that I know it's Josh Radner. Yeah. I'm like, Ted Mosby, what happened to you? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, when you see some of the things he does in the show, you're like, did you need money? Why are you here? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Yeah, I'm looking at a picture of this character, and I don't, I just can't match Ted's voice to this face. It's totally him. Once you know... Like, you know. Okay. And then there is, there's a zebra, there's a Z-tar in the show. What is a Z-tar? It's a zebra centaur. So everything <laughs> in the show is whatever it is, plus a tar. Okay. So, like, the main character is a llama. So she's a llama tar. All right. There's a bird. They're bird tars. Mole people Why? are mole tars. There's bee tars. Plant tars. Everything's a tar. Okay. Uh, mm. Do you like puns? Yeah. In episode one, they come across a tornado. That's a tornado in the shape of a centaur. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, when I discuss this show out loud, it's very weird sounding. Yeah, 100%. Um, it's very good, though. <laughs> I forgot about the tornado, actually. That is, I was only uh, remembering the ending stuff. That's something. But the opening art is super gritty, so I was drawn in. Because there's, like, our world and then centaur world. Okay. And the stuff in, like, our world, uh, it's just drawn really cool. I love the way it looks. Yeah. Um, I would recommend it. It's good. And then we... I actually wanted to watch another show and Yet we another? didn't know what to watch. Okay. So we put a bunch of TV shows in a hat and drew one. Oh my God. And I said, all right, that's the one we're going to watch. So we watched one. What'd you watch? And I have a quest. I have questions for you. Okay. Do you like mysteries? I love mysteries. Do you like time loops? You know, I love time loops. Do you like uh, corporate corruption and you trying to get to the to the guy at the top and figure out what is really going on here you're speaking my language this is a marvel tv show oh come on (laughs) this is loki okay this loki show was nothing like i thought it was gonna be again we watched it in one sitting because taylor was like i will not go to bed oh my god until i know what is happening what happened to y'all this past week and just <laughs> sucked just into the TV shit, hole. man. Let me give you the premise for what that show's about, and you tell me if you're not intrigued. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. There is a corporation called the TVA. Okay. And there is these, I guess, time elders. I forgot what they're called, but there, there's like these... Greater beings that have decided there's a single flow of time that should exist. That way life goes through peacefully. Yeah. And if anything ever branches from the, like, standard timeline, if anything ever branches away, it becomes a variant. And they step in and will correct that error and bring the branch back into the main timeline so that time stays the way it is predetermined and destined to be. I have heard of all, like, the Loki variant stuff, and I don't understand it. There's nothing to understand. Okay. Like, you mean just how there's, like, a bunch of them? Yeah, like, there, there's always, like, Loki variant this cosplays, and I'm like, that is... what? Why are you making... <laughs> oh, well, that's because for five minutes of one show, you see, like, 30 different Lokis, but oh that's it. Oh, my God. Okay. Like, I mean, that's not integral to the plot. All right. <laughs> So basically, at the sometime in Endgame, Loki changes the way that the first Avengers movie happens. Yeah. And he becomes a branch timeline and becomes a variant. So they capture him. 
and Owen Wilson is in it, which I found interesting because <laughs> wow. I haven't seen that guy in a long time. I know. Yeah. And he never said, wow, I was a little pissed off. Terrible. He stops him from being pruned, which is when they like basically erase you from time and space to like correct the mistake. Okay. And he like takes him off to the side and he's like, we need you because there's a version of you branching other timelines and we can't catch you. So if we bring another you in, you'll know how you operate and you can help us find it. Okay. So there's another Loki variant, like, causing problems. So they bring in our Tom Hiddleston one that we know to catch it. And then it goes off the rails. So it's like, who are these people that created the main timeline? How come we can never meet them? Why are they allowing these things to happen? And then they keep time looping and they can do all this shit. So it's built really heavily on timeline shit yeah it's it's a lot to intake <laughs> like it's a lot to intake see if this tickles your fancy they prove that you can't branch a timeline in a natural disaster okay so like basically what was fucking up taylor was if you like wake up late for work one day that's enough to cause a branch in the timeline and they can swoop in and like delete you to fix the timeline I don't like that. Yeah, it's like that like small of a thing can cause a branch, but they are trying to keep this one specific version of time to exist. Jesus. And so many things can branch off from it. How are you going to go in and kill everybody who branches time in the wrong way? There's billions and billions of choices each day. They have predetermined all of it. It's like that big level shit. But like, have they really predetermined it? Like, that's kind of the crux of it. Like, is, is this even real? Yeah. So they're trying to find this and they realize that you can never cause a branch in a natural disaster because most of those people will never survive. Oh, so like shit. they they like go to Pompeii and like show them like cell phones and like future technologies. <laughs> and they're like, the timeline's not breaking That's because once up. Pompeii hits, they'll never be able to like use that info i guess i'm glad they at least had the decency to go back to pompeii and didn't go to like hurricane katrina or something super insensitive like that yeah so like you find out that about time so they kind of like set up a lot of time rules in this show so if you dig the theories of time travel it's pretty cool okay you need to have seen no marvel movies to enjoy this show it is pretty much its own little story and between the corporate corruption time and the mystery of what's going on, I was like, this kind of... And Tom Hiddleston, it's kind of got Kelsey written on it. Why? <laughs> I think you'd like it. Okay. I think you would like it. I don't think you need it in your life. Like, I'm yeah. not going to say it would change anything for you. I thought it was very good. Okay. But, like, it was very unexpected. Yeah. I didn't expect this type of story to come out of this and i'm not telling you most of the like interesting stuff okay because i don't want to spoil that shit yeah so if you were to watch it i think you would dig it and it's only six episodes oh that's short which was the perfect length for me <laughs> are they like hour long they were yeah like about 40 minutes okay well it's not terrible it's not too bad but like each one ends on like a fuck <laughs> what okay like that's what you get afforded when you pair the length of shows down. Yeah. Instead of having 30 episodes in a season, if you would to, if you would to condense that to like 15, 10, yes. you could impact each episode. Yeah. And that's how I felt with He-Man. That's how I felt with Centaur World. And that's how I felt with Loki. Okay. I so like... you had a hard-hitting week of television. Think about 10... So, like, Game of Thrones? Because Game of Thrones was 10, right? Yeah, pretty much every HBO show, they do 10. Honestly, I think that is the perfect length of a season. Yeah, I think so, too. I think that is ideal. I've been watching um, a new show on HBO. Well, it's not new. It's new for me. It's called Succession. Okay. It's fucking good. It's all about, like, corporate corruption and just, like, greed and a terrible family. And they're all rich and bad. And they all hate each other. And we hate all of them. (laughs) 
but it's yeah. so good. It's so good. I eat See, it up. There you go. See, corporate corruption. I got gotcha. you. It's fascinating. It's terrible because it's real, but it's fascinating. Yeah, that's why I think you might like this show because it's I there. There's key things about Loki that I'm like, if Kelsey would get this far into it, this would th- this would get to her. Okay. But of course, it's part of the mystery, so it's buried way deep in there, you know? Yeah, maybe I'll dip my toe in. And then, actually, before Thanksgiving, I watched something else. What was it? But this was movies. Oh, more movies. This will lead me into another quick scalping discussion I have with you. Oh, God, no. You know what? Let's hit the scalpers first. Okay. New Spider-Man's coming out. Oh, my God. Tickets went on sale Monday. Huh. <sighs> November 29th, okay? And I know that you and I speculated, like, will tickets for this sell out instantly? And I was like, they probably won't because it's, like, the COVID era. And you were like, no, they definitely will. Yeah. Well, so they didn't sell out quite as immediately as I had anticipated. Okay. Because it turns out they went on sale at midnight. Ah. So, like, it was 1128. As soon as it hit November 29th, tickets were on sale. And I didn't, we didn't even look till, like... 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Oh, shit. So somehow 10 hours went by that I was still able to gather tickets. That's good. By 6 p.m. the same day, Uh huh. eBay has lots of tickets. Of and I mean lots as in like a batch of six tickets. Here's a batch oh. of 12 tickets, right? Why? That's so many. $10,000 for this fuck? batch of six tickets. What is actually wrong with people? What's what's gotten into society? What the is legit happening? Legit maximum a movie theater ticket cost that I've ever seen is fifteen dollars. Who in their right goddamn mind? Who? What rich child out there <laughs> wants to see Spider Man so bad? I've been speculating on it. First of all, if you're a rich child, you're probably getting a private screening in your yeah. house. Who do, Marvel's who do scalpers, flying this movie to you? Who do scalpers think are buying these tickets? Is they, anybody buying them? You know what? I didn't look because I've been ashamed to look it up. But I'm I would about be to. so Ready? I would be so pissed if anybody is paying this price for a movie. Because eBay does have a feature that lets you see what has sold. Okay. Okay. So real quick, I am on eBay right now. Here is a listing of four tickets. Seven thousand five hundred dollars. Buy now. Why? Why? Here's 5000 or best offer. See, oh, and this is for New Brunfels, Texas. Nobody's down there watching Spider-Man. There's... I'm so mad. <laughs> this one right here. This is 11 tickets, $25,000. What a bargain. What the Are fuck? Are you fucking for real? Now, that one... Maybe, because it's in the Dolby Theater in Las Vegas. So it's like, I guess it's like location. I, I guess if you got your like bridesmaids all together and they want to spend that amount of money on you to go see Spider-Man at your fucking bridal shower. Okay, I can't look at this anymore. But anyway. I'm sweating <laughs> at how mad I am. The reason I think it would sell, I think I brought this up in the pre-ramble, FOMO. Yeah. The people that simply cannot live with the fact that it got spoiled are willing to, like, blow their life savings to not have something spoiled. I think that's legit what happens. It is so easy to just shut yourself off away from the internet for a couple of days and just not look at the news articles. Don't look at stuff online and go see a $15 movie instead of a $1,500 movie. What the fuck? Okay, I am on sold items. I am on sold items. <laughs> I'm on sold items. <laughs> oh my god! Please give me good news. I can't. I can't I'm handle legit the knowledge crying right now. I'm legit crying. You ready? <sighs> no. This guy, somebody, a single bid. Somebody paid fifteen thousand dollars with four dollars and fifty cents shipping. Oh. For a single ticket. What? Of no way home. Why? You're going to have no way home because I'm fucking changing the locks on your ass. What the this fuck? Le- this is legit a single ticket. That that makes me irrationally mad. I want to believe that somebody put that up and then like 
their friend bought it and they're both scalpers, you know, just to like show yeah. that, that somebody I'm is like, buying <laughs> this shit. Yeah. Here's another one. Uh, $10,000. Ten thousand dollars, and this is this one just says tickets. So these ones I think are fake. I think you might be onto something with those two. Because that's too much. Like I'm yeah. trying to, th- I'm trying to think of a situation wherein I would purchase a ten thousand dollar movie ticket, and I think if the entire cast was there and they bought me popcorn, I would pay ten thousand dollars. Well, like here's Not the thing. Maybe I mean, fuck. That's so. That's so much. All of them say how many tickets are in the bundle, right? Yeah. Those ones did not. So I think they're fake. That's just fucking child trafficking or something. That's like, some, that's, that's a disguise. Yeah. This one right here, though, this is three tickets for the upcoming Spider-Man movie. Selling all three tickets for a bundled price uh, will be sent by email as soon as payment is received. Sold for $9,000. That is $1,000 a ticket. Why don't you and I just buy up, like... A theater's worth of tickets and then sell them at ticket price plus a dollar for the convenience. Why not? not, You know? Oh my God. Okay. So I'm seeing a lot of $100 ones. So here's like three tickets for a hundred bucks. Is it awful? No. Is it still grossly overpriced? It's about double price. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I draw the line of, like, that's an acceptable bid. Like, all right, you doubled your money. Like, good for you, right? I'm I'm not ever going to say it's okay to resell a movie ticket, like, f- for higher than what you paid for it. I just, <laughs> like, that is less criminal than spending yeah. $10,000. But, my God, it's still just so, it's so shitty. Like, Here's a sold of 70 Now, this one... This one, I'd pay the 100 bucks for. This is five tickets, right? Okay. But it's at the Chinese Theater in Hollywood. That okay. would be dope. Yeah. But that's $100. That's, that's acceptable. 20 bucks a ticket. That's not bad. That's like movie price anyway. $20 a ticket at the Chinese fucking theater. <laughs> that is cool. That's a good deal. Okay, so most of these ones that have sold are within the $100, $200 range. This one was 70 there are big ones in here for thousands. Yeah. But they have so much less information on their page that I think they might be fake. Okay. Which makes me breathe a sigh of relief. Because <laughs> I was crying that somebody had actually spent 25000 fucking dollars. Yeah, that is quite, quite... I, I, don't, I don't have words for it. It would make it. me depressed in humanity. Yeah, it's despicable. I mean, I've got tickets, so I'm good. Yeah. I have tickets for opening night. I think it's for Thursday. I need to check on that because I didn't buy these tickets. Oh, shit. I need to check when it is because if it's Friday, that's not opening night. Thursday is opening night. Yeah. So I got to check on that. But okay. Thankfully, this like crazy big price thing. Yes, they are listed. No, they are not selling. Okay. Thank God. (sighs) <sighs> anyway, because that movie's coming out, I was like, I have not seen Spider-Man in a long time. Yeah. So I was like, well, I I was going to do what makes you and Taylor mad, and I was going to watch select moments, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I turned it on, and I, I found myself completely engrossed in the first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. All right. And I wound up watching the whole movie. And I was like, wow, that's a good movie. Do I want to watch the second one? Of course. I watched the second one right right back to back. Just fell into that hole. Do I want to watch the third one? Oh, my back God. Back to back. We watched them all, right? Okay. So I watched his whole trilogy front to back. All right. He is so underrated, man. <laughs> he was. He was the best one. I'm going to go ahead and put my hot take out here right now. He is hands down the best Spider-Man. All right. Tom Holland does not hold a candle to him. He only holds frogs in his mouth. Here's why. And actually, what's my, what's my favorite Spider-Man movie? Spider-Man 2. (laughs) Yes. It's not the best one. I've watched all these back to back. That first movie Mm -hmm. is leagues apart 
than any of them that have happened until Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse is the only one that captures the idea of that movie as well. Yeah. I remember watching Spider-Man 1 in theaters and being, you know, I, I fully enjoyed it. And I'm not a fan of, like, superhero movies, as you know, and I loved yeah. Spider-Man, so. I cried, like, 30 times that day. That's too much. <laughs> I love Spider-Man. What can I say? That first movie, you guys need to watch it again. Yeah. I think we remember part two. Part two went a little more campy, started to bring in the, like, <laughs> Army of Darkness style yeah. bits into it. You could equate it like that. Spider-Man 1 is Evil Dead. Okay. <laughs> and Spider-Man 2 and 3 are Army of Darkness, like 100%. Spider-Man 2 is still really, really good. And there are moments in it that are perfection. But part one, there's, there was something about part one. It literally has lightning in a bottle, that movie. There's something right. amazing about that movie. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Please watch part one again, everybody. Okay. It's great. I remembered seeing it at fucking 12 years old, walking outside, and I saw a kid trying to climb the wall of that Cinemark as we left. Yes. It was fucking awesome. I'll never forget that shit. That was the only movie that I think I've seen like that. that I, I remember everything about that day. Yeah. It's a good movie. Two was good. But it was so much more campy. And there was stuff in it that you were like, you're missing the heart of everything. Yeah. And that's that's when I put together why we think Andrew or Tom are better. I thought Tom was the best. Nobody talks about Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. I don't get it. Because he's not good. <laughs> like, how many movies did he have? Did he have a trilogy? He had two. Okay. No one ever mentions him. Because the second movie did really bad, and they were like, well, Marvel had been like, can you let us have the keys? Can you let us have the keys? <laughs> and they were like, nope, we're doing Andrew. Leave us alone. Okay. And when part two underperformed, they were like, here's the keys, and then Marvel did gangbusters with Tom Holland. All right. I think I know why we all think Tom's the best. Okay. Here's my hot take. You ready? Yes. It's because it's... It's just a more accomplished movie. It's an easier movie. We can have him sticking to an airplane that's falling out of the sky. Like, we can do these special effects that it's easier to do the action stuff. It just feels better as a movie. But I'm thinking about those movies and the heart and soul and the feeling of what it is to be Spider-Man is not in those movies. Okay. Only that first Tobey Maguire movie has that. Spider-Man 2, did, it's got some stuff, but it's trying to be too, like, action-y a bit. I think we're conflating having good Spider-Man action with having a good Spider-Man. Okay. Because his movies are phenomenal, and there are some moments in those movies that make me cry because they're pretty awesome. Yeah. But, like, I've seen those movies, and I went and watched this movie that is 20 years old, and I finished it and was like that's the best spider-man movie i've ever seen <laughs> having seen 20 years of movies past then right and i was like why do i think that one's so good because even when two got like finished i was like i don't feel that with this one i just think it's a fun movie i was like but why did part one hit me so good and it's because of it's because of the guy in the suit it's not about the action of being Spider-Man. It's what it is to be Spider-Man. Yeah, I mean, you have to have a strong actor at the helm. Well, it's like, why, like, that was the only one to do Uncle Ben stuff. And I don't know if that's enough to set it off for that. Because, like, Tom Holland never goes into Uncle Ben stuff. Really? Yeah, Uncle Ben, well, we've had too many Uncle Bens dying because we keep rebooting the same <laughs> franchise within three years. Okay. So they were like, he's already died and we'll simply mention it. So so we've never seen it on his side. All right. But like when it happens in that first movie, it's it's hard. Yeah, it's man. impactful. It's really intense. And I forgot how bad some of that stuff was. Because he's got his powers and he's trying to go win money and like use his powers. 
And Uncle Ben's just trying to talk to him, and he goes, look, I know I'm not your dad. And he goes, so so quit trying to be, and throws yeah. it in his face. And that's the last thing he ever says to him. It's so sad. Like, it's shit like that that is what Spider-Man's all about. The, the not making the right choice and putting yourself above the choice you want to make. Yeah. And that's why the game works so good with the ending that I told you guys about. So Right. I'm not saying go watch the trilogy because Spider-Man 3 was just as bad as I remembered. I fucking hated it still. Okay. It's not good. At least watch watched the first one again. We need to give Toby his just desserts, okay? Okay. I love him. Uh, you want to take a break? Grab a slice of New York pizza? Web on out of here? <laughs> sure. But, but. Pizza time. I have been, I don't know what the deal is. I think it's our new bed. Yeah. But something, like, I wake up stiff, like, every morning. I don't know if, Me like, too. I'm, like, just tense at night, just, like, I'm upset subconsciously <laughs> or whatever, right? Yeah. But, like, I'm fucking stiff, dude, and I dream of going to get a massage yes. all the time. I do, too. And, like, and, my shoulders yeah. live in, like, in a constant state. Richard touches my back, and he's like, you're like a brick wall. <laughs> I'm like, yep. I know. This is my body. I live in here. I have been trying to... I'm going to ask you guys next stream. Let me know if, like, my shoulders are sitting right below my ears. Because I feel like they're always just pulled up, and I'm just like... Hurr. You're just, like, constantly shrugging. I th I feel like I am. And so, like, I, I will, like, try to, like, just shake my arms loose and get my shoulders down low. Yeah. But I feel like they're always raised and, like, poised, like, ready to go. <laughs> and I, it hurts, kind of, you know? I'm, like, hyper aware of my posture at all times. I'm always, like, trying to make sure my back is not in a position where I'm going to get a fucking hunchback. Yes, yeah, that's, that's kind of where I've been lately because I'm so stiff that it hurts to, it just hurts to exist. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that little bit of the pre-ramble. If you did, you want to get that full bonus episode, see what else we were talking about in there. Head on over to patreon.com slash ymbtoap. That is, you must be thinking of another podcast. Become a patron. Join us and see all this extra little stuff we have for you guys. And it's getting cold out there. I know you guys are looking for some merch, some gear to stay warm in because you love the Yimtope. Go get you some hoodies and stuff at our Yimtope gear store at the Yimtope Peril store. Uh, we've got shirts long sleeve shirts we got hoodies zip up jackets all kinds of stuff so you can stay warm this with looking like to be a pretty pretty hardcore winter again out here <sighs> please don't be hardcore i don't <laughs> no. want a hardcore winter uh the link to that shop is in our show notes and again thank you to all of our supporters that we have we love you guys so much you do not understand and now let's get you back to that regularly scheduled content so i found this article that I found quite interesting. I know that you are a huge proponent for game preservation, right? Yes. We talk about it quite a bit. Um, the Microsoft gaming chief has made a statement and he thinks, so this is Phil Spencer talking. He wants the gaming industry as a whole to work together with a common goal of keeping older games available to modern audiences. Thank you. He's like putting it out there. He's like, we should be doing this. And I don't know why more people aren't doing it. So, yeah, I mean, I know that they have been working on this with the Xbox Game Pass and just all the, the online features of the Xbox new consoles. Uh, they have put up like they just announced the addition of 70 more games that are going to be in its catalog of um, like old Xbox emulated games, you know, that are available yeah. to play through Game Pass. They're they're working on it, you know. They have constant projects where they're getting old games oh, yeah. on there, which is it's good to see. I love it, and um, I mean, it's good. It's I like it. <laughs> I think that more people should be moving toward this, and I don't know why it's been such a long, rocky road to here. You know, they are even doing a step up above just preservation. They're making those games better most times. Yeah, they're like doing a modernization. Yeah, so they have, uh, it's like auto HDR. So I can go play a game that was on the Xbox before HDR was even a dream. Yeah. And play it in HDR. Like they have an algorithm that'll like figure it out. Yeah. And highlight it upright. And they have a thing called like frame boost 
where a game that ran at like 30, you can play at a full 60 now. Yeah. You, you, you can go play an old game like it was brand new today. It's fucking nice. That's phenomenal. And it's just, I think, I think that there's like a badge of dishonor kind of on it because it's, it's, it's via emulators that this is made possible. And yeah. most people, when they think emulators, they think, oh, that's pirate technology. <laughs> like that's kids who don't want to pay for the games and they're downloading them off the internet. You wouldn't download a car. I would. <laughs> I would Good. too, man. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I just think it's like, it's a problematic word for the industry they're like we don't like emulators because that's how people steal our shit like why don't you use emulators for your gain make old games better again so like is microsoft using emulators yeah the stuff working okay yeah that's that's how they're doing it that's stupid because emulation just means we're getting something to run and it's thinking it's running on a different hardware yeah like you can't just make a game work on a console of today yeah. I mean, of course, I only really know architecture of PlayStation shit. But so, like, the PS3 had a specific chip in it. Like, you had to design your games around this specific chip usage, right? Right. Then they built the PS4. And guess what? It doesn't have that chip. So those games would look to utilize that to run, and they can't. Therefore, they don't work. So you emulate... And you make it think it's finding that chip, and then it runs. It's not yeah. pirating. It's getting no. a game to think it's running where it needs to be. That's how people run Skyrim on their, like, Samsung fridge and whatnot, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's simply making it work where it shouldn't. Which I guess you can call pirating, but really, it's... That's like saying, you know, you want to watch something that was on a VHS. So you find a way to get a VHS to DVD converter... Because there's no VCRs. Right. So now that I've put something that was on a VHS to a DVD, I'm essentially emulating it, right? Right. Is that wrong? I mean, I'm, if you bought the DVD and in the, in the VHS in the first place, no, yeah. technically. I'm but, bringing it forward to a place where it's accessible to use and in, indulge in. Yeah. I just think, like, the the wall of it is that people in the industry know like emulators have been used historically by people to, you know, they, a copy of the game gets on the internet somehow. I don't pretend to know how these things work. Somebody, somebody out there leaks it and it's available on the internet. And then, you know, you can download it and play it via your PC. And that's just like how you get illegal games. Like I had an illegal copy of the entire library of Sims games for the longest time. I have them like legally now, but when I was poor and in college, I yeah. was all about downloading them. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that it's a technology that should be harnessed. And he had a quote that I liked. So this is from Phil Spencer. He says, I think in the end, if we say, hey, anybody should be able to play any game or own any game and continue to play it, that seems like a great North Star for us as an industry. So like, that's the path he yeah. wants everyone to follow. We need, like We make games. We want people to play them. We want people to be able to play them for years to come. Why not make it that available widely to the public as an industry we should all work toward this people that aren't doing that i think they are forgetting that like the gamer base is growing like it's not the you're not selling games to the same thousand people that were playing in the 80s yeah, now you it's know? just millions because kids are into it and old people are still into it. Yeah, you're selling it to new people. You need to... I mean, we got inspired by certain games, right? Yeah. Are you going to tell me that those same inspiring moments could not affect a younger generation? Right. That's like saying, oh, well, any movie that was made before 2000 is old compared to these movies. They right. can't be good. Like that's Of why course they're, they're good. That's why they're remaking the Final Fantasy series because it's so iconic. And like, if if we're not going to be able to play the original polygon thick one and see that scene with with Aerith, you know, like yeah. why? Let's update it, make it modern. It's not an emulator. It's just you know, it's a new game, but it's the same. It's the same theory that ties those ideas together. You know, like yeah. you you want to bring the message from these like hard hitting moments to future generations. Exactly. If 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 you think game preservation is bad, which, Sony, I'm sorry, but you have said that to me. Yeah. 
You're basically saying any game you've ever created before sucks. Right. You're saying you've only done bad work before. And that nothing you've ever done is worth seeing again. It's like when it's like when an artist releases a CD and then they have like a remaster later, you know, because they want to make it sound yeah. even better. They want to put it on like from a record to a CD or whatever. They want to make it sound like the best for the technology that's available. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to just stop, like I stop the idea in its tracks. Yeah. I understand you have to take resources to convert these things into working on new stuff, right? Yeah. And there's I like, I get that. There's rights involved, some kind of copyrightable well, yeah. bullshit that you have to get through, red tape everywhere, all that. But, like, <laughs> you're going to tell me that, like, if Nintendo were like, hey, we're going to put Super Mario World out again for, like, five bucks, that the world would not buy that perfection that is a game. Right. It's a good game. It's still rock solid. And a kid that is just getting into games would be like, you can do this? Like, it would blow their mind. Still. Right. Just because we've seen things now doesn't mean we can't appreciate how you were able to accomplish something great before with lesser technology. Yeah. I've watched an old movie and been like, dude, that was mind-blowing at the time. And the fact that they, you know, were looking to do this effect, but this is how they still achieved it pretty reasonably, that's still amazing. Yeah. You're throwing away human ingenuity and trying to give you something against all odds of what they had available to themselves. And now they can kind of achieve it, you know? Right. Like these games that are getting the frame boost and stuff. I would fucking love to play old God of War on my PS5 with it looking slightly prettier. Why not? Yeah, who wouldn't? Maybe I want to replay those. They were big games for a reason. Why don't you want new people to play them? I don't understand that. I've told you uh, what Richard's been working on, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he's got, like, a whole shelf set up with every console that he's ever owned in it. Um, yeah. He just got his GameCube up and running. So he, his hobby is, like, he likes to break open old consoles, clean the shit out of them. Because, my God, yeah. if you've ever broken open a console, old or new, they can get pretty scrunchy up in there. So Oh, yeah. He gets in there with, like, Q-tips, like the like the dude from Toy Story who cleans Andy's eyes <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. Woody's eyes. Yeah. Um, and gets them all clean and operational. And he just bought... um a new system. I wish I had looked at the name of it before I came back here, but it's like, it's like a system that lets you play Famicom, Nintendo, SNES, and one more, I think it's Atari something or other. I've had one of those. It's very cool. (laughs) It's like all in one and it's got four cartridge slots. And I'm like, what is this? He's, he's basically just trying to find a way to play every single game that he has owned. And he's gotten a lot of stuff hooked up back here. I think that you would really enjoy to see what he has going on because it's been his pet project for the last couple of weeks and he's got so much happening in that room now. Yeah, there's there's systems that are unplayable in my household as of now because of yeah. buying a new TV. Yeah, so he's trying to find, like, if he can't get the console to work with what he has, he's getting stuff that is basically a workaround for it. He's got some emulators happening. He's got just a bunch of cool shit going on. Yeah, I wanted to get a HDMI like converter for the for the GameCube. Uh huh. And I mean, you can. They're readily available. But I don't really want to drop 150 bucks on that. Yeah. Is it worth spending 150 to play Luigi's Mansion for 10 minutes? You know. Yeah. So I was like, mm, maybe not. Like, I don't know why it is such a thing. And I think it's funny that we talk about it so much now. Because I remember in, like, middle school, me and a friend had discussed how we were going to grow up. And we were going to create a console that played every game ever made. Oh, my God. That's the dream. We were like, it would have, I mean, there were, like, five major consoles. And it was like, yeah, it's got a Super Nintendo spot, a Sega spot, a PlayStation disc spot. (laughs) <laughs> and, like, Dreamcast wasn't even around yet, so it's like, it, that's everything, you know? That's everything. What more could we need ever in the whole history of life? Yeah, who knew how fucking complicated that was going to get right. 10 years down the road? God. No, yeah, that's that's awesome. I follow some TikToks of guys that have whole setups like that. Yeah. Like, they've got, a like, a, a 
super low shelf with like a 70 inch TV up above it. Yes. <laughs> and they have a cord that does every single one and you can just turn on any system and it will work. Yeah. You like next time you're over here, I want him to take you on like a little electronic tour of what he's got going on because my goodness, it's so yeah, much. That would be awesome. Uh, you know, it's not awesome. Well, it's not awesome. Uh, I told everybody to get on the halo train. If you had game pass. Yeah. I still think it's fun, but it's getting a little destiny for me. Uh Oh, I started playing it and they're doing an event right now where you have to like earn XP of a certain event. So there's like your XP for your main level, but then there's XP for this event. Okay. Which is different. Okay. Stupid. But whatever. The only way you earn XP is by completing challenges. If you sit in a match, if you if you get the most kills in the entire match, you're still just going to get 50 XP. That's it. Jesus. You get 50 XP for having 100 kills or 50 XP for having one kill that plays no part in you getting xp really not not at all because if your challenge that was up was get 30 kills with this specific weapon but you killed 100 people with a different one you've progressed that challenge zero percent so you are that much you're that much further away still from getting that xp boost okay so it's challenge based and they have this exclusive event going on right now and normally you have a list of like four challenges. They might put one challenge a day in that list for that special one. And it's like 100 XP and you need like 50,000 to get the final thing. Yeah. It's a broken progression system. And it's like kind of wanting you to spend money Ugh. to buy these little things in there that you can swap out the challenges for something else. So you can hopefully luck into one for that event. Okay. And it really frustrated me and kind of pushed me off from it. Yeah. That's annoying. Like I want to have fun with the game, but it's like, well now I can never look at the rewards because they're going to make it hard to ever get there. Yeah. So like I played, I don't know if like two hours the other night and got two levels into like the, like 15 that's in that, specialty pack thing yeah and it's only open for a week so like what i'm just supposed to hopefully luck into all these challenges and get all this shit it's not good (sighs) that sucks it's really bad so um i don't know Uh, apparently it's a big deal and the like ceo of 343 that makes the game they're like we're gonna fix everything don't you worry we've been playing it too and we don't like it either and it's like whatever dude you made it you're you're telling me you didn't like retry this progression system at all you just slapped it in and said here you go guys yeah that you know what it is you know what you were going for you know what you did and now they're like oh yeah i don't like it either okay i don't know why games are just having a hard time trying to be good yeah they're they're all trying to find what will be the the giant cash grab again i think that's kind of where we're at right now i it's we're transitioning from like, you know, battle Royale was a huge thing for a long time and that's kind of like fallen off the wayside. So I think people are trying to be like, what's next. And the season pass thing is really like ramping up in a way that doesn't feel good. Yeah. The battle pass was interesting. The battle pass for halo, even the normal one, let's exclude secondary XP. That's unrelated to your main XP. Right. Cause that's already stupid. That's like, that's like a bells and pokey, right? Right. You're getting like two different buckets for two different items. That's that's weird, you know? Right. Most of the rewards you get for the main XP progression are those challenge swap things or an XP boost for like 30 minutes. Okay. <laughs> so it takes me, let's say, 40 matches to go up one level and I get a 30 minute XP boost. That sucks. Or I get a one-time use thing. It's like, okay, don't want to kill people with the sniper. Use this little thing and you can swap it out and maybe get a different gun to kill people with instead. Man. (laughs) And that's what I got for leveling up is the ability to change a challenge. (laughs) Yeah, that's That's a waste of fucking time. It is. I don't like that. It's not good. Do you want to go to a gentler place? Always. Take my hand and let's walk on over to Animal Crossing Corner. 
It's not gentle this week. Oh, why? Oh, no. <laughs> I done bad. I did a bad thing. Man, I haven't played in like a week. I. What'd you do? I did you delete tra- it again? No. I time traveled and I feel bad about it. <laughs> You'll get over it. I don't know, man. You'll get I, over it. I just needed. Okay, so on Friendsgiving, our dear friend Jose brought over um, Amiibo cards. Oh, like, yeah. Those little spoofed Amiibo cards, which, yeah. I mean, that's just an emulator, right? <laughs> um, he made my favorite villager, Punchy, wear okay. a little Yimtope hoodie. And it I fucking died because I was wearing my Yimtope hoodie when he gave it to me. And I was like, wait, match. Oh, my God. But um, okay. anyway, so I, I wanted Punchy to come onto my island. And I was, like, waiting to get... I wanted to, like beat the game, get terraforming, you know, before I set yeah. up my neighborhood and all that. And I was like, okay, I have terraforming. This is perfect. And then like one of my ugly villagers was like, Hey, I want to leave. And I was like, cool, fucking pack Bye. it. And I was like, this is the perfect time to invite punchy. So I did and I invited him and I didn't realize that you have to invite him like three separate days. Three yeah. Like I was thinking like you just invite him over once and you get him three gifts yeah, but it's three whole days of work, and I was like, I don't have the stamina for that. So, <laughs> I just like did the little time traveling thing where I got him to you know come to the island, and I was like, here's your gift, and then just fast forward to the next day, here's your okay. second gift, here's your third gift, and uh, I have him like moved in fully now, and he's on my island and he's living his good life, and I'm scared to go back in time because I don't know how time travel works. And like I've looked up, it's here. You it's, go. Do you have turnips? No. Then you're good. Okay. The only so, thing that's really bad is turnips. Okay, so like if you if you go back in time, your turnips expire or something. Immediately, yeah. Okay. So like if it's Sunday and you go back a day, it's like oh you fuck they are rotten. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I can go back because I'm like three days in the future and I haven't touched my console since because I feel guilty about it. I'm like, what am I no. doing? Who am I? That's kind. Of, I, that's kind of the nature of this game. I mean, <sighs> my island is where it is from time traveling. I mean, I did get like six buildings moved real quick, like so it felt pretty good. I but... mean, last Halloween, I only craft. I I I got every item for Halloween and all the variants because I time traveled and played, I played October for like two full months worth. Oh my God. So I could harvest enough pumpkins for it. (laughs) Jesus. Yeah. Like I would like fast forward like a day at a time to make it grow the three pumpkins, you know? Yeah. Cause you have to water it every day. So you don't get a full stack until the third day. Right. Right. And then I did that. Let's say, you know, Five times, that's 15 days, the month is almost over, and then I would go back to the God. first and do it again. Holy shit. Yeah, I, I, I did it a bunch that, that year, but I had every Halloween item, and I was okay. pretty happy. Man, yeah, I'm, time travel does have its uses in this game. I am no longer averse to it. I, I won't judge anybody for time traveling, because I have done it now, and I've tasted the wine of the gods. So, um, yeah, I'm scared of it, but... Only if it. you do the interest thing. That's when it's bad. <laughs> What's when it's bad? When you do where, like, you put some money in the bank and you just time travel 5,000 years and just collect all the interest. Yeah, that is bad. That's just bad. Like, play the game. Yeah. But, I mean, you're still waiting the days. You're just doing it faster. Okay, yeah. That's fine. Right. That's fine. That's fine. I did get the roost, though. That's nice. <clears throat> Very nice. I'm happy about that. The vibe in there, as Ferdin has stated previously, <laughs> is immaculate. I just like the way he pours coffee. It's yeah, man. very Ooh. soothing. I was relaxed when I was getting that cup of coffee. I was like, pour me another. And he was like, no. He's like, Geez, calm down. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't played in a while. You falling out of it? Just well, too many it's chores? Like, it's like, well, it's not even the chores. Because like, I like going to the Cap'n Island and doing my... Um, what do you call it? My like gyroids and stuff. Yeah. But now I'm where I'm really going to start terraforming. Yeah. And, I, and, and like, I need to start moving the houses. Mm-hmm. And that's daunting me a bit, I think. Man, I'm I, like, I don't really care, but I also don't want it to be bad. I know. You know. I did the thing where I 
told myself, I was like, I'm just going to move it in a way that feels good to me. And I'm not going to look up stuff online. And then I like found an Instagram that puts up all these fucking builds of different <laughs> Animal Crossing islands and shit. And I was like, this is incredible. And I've already moved my buildings and it's too late for me to do any of this idea. My idea is shit. <laughs> but did I send you your truck yet? No, you didn't. Ooh, I forgot about the truck. Yeah, it's in my pocket. Yeah, send I'm, me that truck. I'm, I'm holding a whole truck in my pocket. <laughs> That's got to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, I do need to log on. But lately, I've, I've been playing a different game on the Switch, so I'm like, well, I don't know how it saves. I'm not going to turn it off, so I just <laughs> keep with the one game, you know? Okay. I get in big bouts with that game, and I'm, yeah. I'm in a lull right now. I know that feel. And pretty soon, I'll catch some inspiration and fucking go hard again. Yeah. Inspiration! Inspiration's hitting! You ready? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna make a centaur world island. Oh my god, what's the matter with you? Yeah. What does that even entail? You can't become a centaur. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll figure out something. Okay. Somehow I'll make this work. All right. Okay. Um, are you ready to put that get that truck out of your pocket? <laughs> uh yeah, it's it's very heavy. Okay. Before we go to the end, I do want to mention our uh our latest Patreon review is up. If you're a member of the Patreon club, the Zeitgeist, get in there, have a look. We reviewed Back for Blood. This is one of my favorite things we reviewed in a very long time. And yeah, I just wanted it to say was, how much it fun was, it was. It was a very interesting review. Yeah, I it was a different format it. than normal. So uh, we actually like played through the first act of the game for you. Not the whole first act, but like the first act of the first act. <laughs> yeah, like the first like level, I guess. The of first the act. leg. The game is split yeah. up weird. If you're interested and you want to know more about Back for Blood, you want to know more about Yemtope, go on over to Patreon. Look at that review. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a very good review. Honestly, it's a very good game. It is. Yeah, you should go uh, check that out and see what we have to say. You should go check it out. Play with us. And uh, while you're at it, why don't you tell your friends about us? Help us grow this audience. Don't forget to subscribe to us on your favorite platform so you never, ever miss a Ding Dang episode. We release weekly every single Monday, each and every one. We're here for you in your pocket right next to that truck. If you got a second to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, that helps us find many more lovely listeners just like you. And don't forget, you can also find us and friend us on all the social medias. We are YMBTOAP on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. We just had an awesome stream a couple weeks ago, but I still want to hit on it again. Uh, we had a friend of ours show us everything about Dark Souls. It's been really hurting me to not buy all of them for Black Friday, <laughs> but I managed not to because I have Bloodborne. I'm playing that. Yes. But uh, and we did a little donation yes. from that stream. And I just wanted to, again, thank all of you who donated. Truly appreciate it. It, it made me very happy being able to do that. Yeah, so. we were able to give $100 to the Able Gamers charity, which was, it, it felt good. It's Thanksgiving. We were yes. giving and thanking, and it was yes. wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and we got an email back from them, which I know was like, a template email, but I still felt very nice. <laughs> uh, and again, thank you to all of our patrons. You you give us the lifeblood to keep this thing going uh, with your ideas, with the support that you bring us, being in the Discord and just all the, the fun and ideas we bounce around. You guys are literally the best. You're the best community. I love interacting with you guys all the time. And if... If you're not in our Discord, but you still want to give us an idea, you want to, you know, see what we think about something and maybe test if, you know, you want to join our kind of conversation at Discord, you can always send us an email. That's ymbtoap at gmail.com. Send us a listener mail. How do you feel about game preservation? How do you feel about Centaur World? Do you like He-Man? Who's the best Spider-Man? And if you say Andrew, get out of here. I'm curious if anybody out there wants to defend Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man performance because I've yet to hear one. Oh, I've heard plenty. Okay. And there's some good stuff about him. It's not him that I don't like about the movies. What is it, Emma Stone? <laughs> no, I love Emma Stone. Of course you do. Um, that's a whole topic. Okay. We'll that's get into a, it at a later date. The, that's, that's a big thing. 
Don't forget that our theme song is The Grim Reaper Blows the Horn by Farage. Please check him out on YouTube, guys. Please check him out on YouTube. The tube of you, the tube of him, the Farage tube. And as always, thank you so much for listening and tune in next time to get the answer to that burning question. What if Emma Stone was Spider-Man? But we had one more important sound we wanted you to hear. Oh, man. Nothing goes down like a smooth seltzer. I've started to cut out my, like, moans of Dr. Pepper pleasure. Because, <laughs> like, we always crack it, and then I'm always like, Ugh! <laughs> People don't know. <laughs> I always know.